Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, so we will solve a couple of problems more. It's all part of the course which I called Mass and Problems, Mass Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Now this is basically a continuation of the course called Mass for Teens uh, on the same website. So I do suggest you obviously to be familiar with uh, the main course. These are just problems which are in some way not exactly standard, um, but still very interesting to, um, basically it helps to develop your thinking, your analytical uh, abilities, uh, your other qualities, very important, like logic, for example, or creativity. All right, so um, these problems are not exactly typical, as I was saying. They require certain, maybe unorthodox approach. And uh, some of them are really very easy as soon as you just get very important like the first the right thought how to approach this problem some of them are maybe a little bit more um, uh, time consuming let's say so today i have two problems one of them is quick you just have to like come up with something very simple but that's basically the whole problem is to, to get that one little thing which really give, g gives you the solution. Another problem, the second one which I'm going to present today, is a little bit more uh, time consuming, uh, but well, it's still important to be again, to be creative, to be persistent in, in your approach to solving problems. Um, okay, so the problem number one. Uh, you have two piles of stones, one pile of stone and another pile of stone. Exactly the same number of stones are in each pile. And you have two players. So the game is, on each move, a player takes as many stones from one pile as he wants basically. Then the second player does exactly the same, takes as many stones as he wants from one particular pile, one of these two. Now the winner is the person who takes the last stones from whatever the pile remains. So here is the question. You have two players, player number one, player number two. So first player number one starts, second player number two starts. Is there a strategy for player number two to always win? Well, obviously the answer is yes, and our purpose is to develop that strategy. Okay, now it's a good thing to pause the video if you did not really solve this problem before and think about it. Now, here is the solution. <coughs> it's very important that you think about this problem before basically listening to this uh, solution which I am suggesting. Either you will come up with a solution yourself which is the best of, with, of the best of the best or if you don't, it's still important to think about this, because the whole process of thinking and changing what kind of strategies sh should I choose, it's still a very useful process. It's training, it's, it's a training for your brain. Okay, now here is a strategy. For example, you have n stones here and n stones here. Now, player number one takes and stones, and we don't know actually how many he will take, but from the one particular pile of stones. Maybe all of them, maybe all capital N. So maybe lowercase n is equal to capital, and there is nothing left in this. So as a result, the pile number one contains n minus n, and pile number two still n. So this is a strategy now. For number two, he takes also n, but from the second, 
this is from the first pile. And he takes from the second to equalize number of stones. So as a result, you have n minus n and n minus n. Again, equal. So we started with equal, and number two makes it equal again. So no matter how many stones is taken by the first player, the second player takes exactly the same number of stones from another pile, equalizing the number of stones. Why is it a winning strategy? Well, if lowercase n is equal to capital, so he will take everything from here, then the number two will take everything from here, taking the less stones and therefore, and, and therefore winning. If it's less than the capital N, if lowercase is less than, then there is something uh, left in this pile, and after the second player makes uh, his move, the second pile has exactly the same. And we are returning to the same situation as before with lesser number of stones. Well, I didn't tell it in the beginning that to take some stones is mandatory. So, uh, uh, gradually, little by little, these piles of stones are getting lower and lower in number of stones and eventually there will be no more than one, obviously, in which case the first player would be obliged to take that one and then the second player will take the sec will take from the from another pile exactly the same and that would be the last one. So equalizing the number of stones is the strategy. If it was equal it should be equal after the second player makes its move. And he will always win by doing that. Now, in the um, notes for this lecture, and every lecture has notes with solutions in this case, etc., I um, stated the, pro the problem slightly differently. I did not specify that the number of stones is equal to each other. Now, what to do in this case well, in this case, there is no winning strategy, except if I will allow for um, the first player to either take some stones or um, skip his turn and let the second player to start the game. Well, in which case, uh, if the number of stones is equal, then the first player should actually uh, um, yield the right for the first uh, move to the second player, in which case the first player always be the winner. So if we will add another rule that there is one uh, particular case in the very, very beginning of the game when the first player can actually yield the uh, the right to the first move to the second player, then it's the first player who will get the winning strategy. So either if number of stones is not equal in the beginning, then the first player equalizes that, and then he becomes actually the master of the game, because he will always equalize. Or if the number of stones is equal, then the first player should yield the right to the second player, actually making the second player the first, and the first player make, make, makes himself the second, in which case basically the same as I have just explained here. So whatever it is, this is a little bit more uh, simple case than the one which I put in the notes for this lecture. Um, but in any case, the I idea is exactly the same. Equalizing the number of stones will give you the win. Okay, so that's my first problem, and again it's very kind of short and easy, and the only thing which was necessary is to basically come up with the idea of, of equalization of the number of stones as the winning strategy. That's the idea. All this about unequal stone number of stones in the beginning and yielding, that, that's just details. Okay. The second problem 
is um, slightly different in uh, the way how well um, it, it, it's kind of solved and uh, in the way how um, you really have to consume certain amount of time to think about different uh, cases because this is the problem where you really have to consider different cases and that's where the logic comes. So here is the problem. You have six points. They can be in space, then can be on a plane, but what's important is that no three points are lying on the same uh, straight line. So I will put them into a circle basically, but it doesn't really matter. In this case we don't have any three points lying on the same line, that's what's important. Okay, now any uh, subset of three points out of six, three out of six we will call it a triplet. It's just for brevity, because every time to say subset of three points out of six points, that's too much. Okay, triplet is any group of three points out of this six. Now, um, next thing is, we are connecting these points with segments, for instance this or this, or this, doesn't really matter. Now, there are certain triplets in this particular case which have at least one connection. For example, one, two, three, it has two connections. One, two, three, it has one connection, this one. One, two, three, these do not have any connections, these three points, right? So we have plain triplets and we have, I will call, it, I will call them good triplets. They have one or two or even three connections. But three connections I will obviously call a triangle. So if I will add this particular segment then these three points are obviously making, this triplet makes a triangle. All right, so we have triangle, we have good triplets like this, this, and this, because there is one connection. And we have just plain triplets, which are not connected at all. Three points not connected at all. Okay, now, what if I will tell you and this is the given that all triplets are good. So this is a given that all triplets are good, which means every group of three three points has at least one connection, or two or three. If three is a triangle, but what but all of them are good. There are no uh, triplets like this one by, by actually the initial given condition. There are no triplets without any segments. So that's given. So what's to prove? Proof. Prove that there is at least one triangle. I cannot satisfy my condition that all triplets are good which means they have at least one connection without making a triangle. Well, let's just try as a, as a kind of a illustration. What if, for example, I will connect them this way? Now, are all triplets good? No. This one, these three points are not connected. And these three points are not connected. Okay? So, now again, it makes sense for you to pause the video and to start thinking. How can we prove that there are only, uh, there, there is always at least one triangle 
if we if we want if if we want all of the triplets to be good, then we need we have to have at least one triangle. Um, okay. Now, in the notes for this lecture, I consider all different cases, and they have nice pictures, much nicer than this one, obviously, just to clarify my points. So I will try to basically do more or less the same. First of all, the approach. Now, the approach which I, I'm, I have chosen, maybe there are some other and better ones, and by the way, if you have you know, better solution, by, by all means send it to me and I'll publish it on the website with proper references. Okay, so my approach is the following. Let's count how many triplets in theory exist. And then let's count how many triplets we are making by connecting points. If in the process of connecting points I will have less than the number without making a triangle well, it means that, obviously, uh, we need to make a triangle. So I cannot avoid triangle and still make all my triplets good. Here is basically the approach. Well, the first part is simple. How many, tri uh, how many triplets uh, are from the six points? Well, that's number of combination from 6 by 3, which is 6 factorial, divided by 6 minus 3 factorial, and 3 factorial, which is 20. So there are 20 different um, triplets. That's simple. Now we have to count how many triplets we are making. Now, before that, um, I have one very simple theorem to prove, auxiliary theorem, lemma it's called. If you have a point connected to three other points, if then there is a triangle. Why? Because these three points make a triplet, which must be good by the given condition of the, of the problem, which means there is some connection, either this one, or this one, or this one. But in any case, if we have this one, we have this triangle. If we have this connection between these three points, we have this triangle. And if we have this, we have this triangle. So in any case, if you have a point with three connections, it means you have a triangle, basically, where next step in, in, in logic. So if you want to avoid triangles by basically making our triplets good by connecting the points, you have to avoid three segments from the same point because that would lead to a triangle anyway. And basically what I will just show that if you are trying to avoid three segments from the same point, you will not be able to make 20 triplets covered. You will make only like less, like 18 or 16, 17, 15, whatever. And that's what I'm going to prove if I will be able to prove it that avoiding triangles and avoiding three segments from the same point, if I will, I will, will be able to prove that by avoiding this situation I will not be able to reach 20, that means that I will have to really have either triangle explicitly built or I will have three lines, three segments coming from the same point which next logical step would lead to a triangle anyway. So that's basically the plan. So my problem is how to prove that by avoiding three segments from the same line and avoiding explicit triangles, how, uh, how, how can I prove that I will not reach 20? 
Well, let's just count. Here is how we will count. For example, I do not have yet any connection at all. And I make the first segment connecting. How many good triplets I am making in this particular case? Well, obviously four, because this triplet now is good, because it has one connection. This triplet is good, because it has one connection. This triplet is good, and this triplet is good. So by connecting two previously unconnected uh, points, it doesn't matter how, what, what here doesn't really matter. As long as these two points are naked, not connected to anything, then connecting them makes four additional um, good triplets. Okay, that's one case. What if I have two points and one of them has already been connected to something? And I'm making a new connection, this one. How many new triangles, new triplets, sorry, are becoming good in this particular case? I could not count this one because this one was already good because we had this connection. So I have to count only this this and this. So I will have three new uh, good triangles. New, that's what's important. Three, two, new, three new uh, triangles. And finally, there is final case, if my point, points which I would like to connect, already have connections before that. Both of them. So I had first case no connection, second case one connection, and the third case three connection. Okay. How many new triplets become good in this particular case if I will connect them? Again, I cannot count this one because it already was uh, containing two connecting points. It was already good, and I cannot count these. This. Uh, tri triplet because again this already was there so it was already so how many new ones well obviously two one and two so I have either four or three or two new uh, good triplets by connecting two points okay that's fine so let's start connecting <coughs> Now, we should not have situation when from one point I have three connections, because that leads to a triangle and that would uh, finish basically the problem. So I have only two from each point, two connections from each point. You're coming to it and you're coming out of it. And then no more than two on this one, no more than two on this one, etc. Now, if they do not close a loop, let's say one, two, three, four, five. If I do not close this at all, does it make sense or not? It doesn't make sense. It makes sense to close. Why? Because I will create new good triangles. I will not diminish. I will only increase. Maybe the same, but at least uh, it not d diminish. So connecting the points always makes sense. I will always I might increase number of good triangles without basically breaking the rules of uh, not having uh, more than three points from one, uh, no, no more than three segments from one point. So we can consider that these six points make at least one or two loops, etc. No, two loops doesn't make any sense actually, because if it's a loop, then it's a three, right? Six divided by two loops. I cannot make it, and that already triangle. So this situation doesn't make any sense. Obviously, we should not connect it this way. 
What we can do is we can arrange a loop of all six of them and we can count how many good triangles are in this case. We can arrange a loop of five of them leaving the sixth one naked and we can arrange of loop of four of them having two obviously connected as the third case. So we have only three cases basically. We cannot have a loop of three because it's already a triangle so we are they're trying to prove that we can do it without making triangles, right? So let's try. And we will fail, obviously. Without making triangles, we can't do it. All right, let's count about, let, let's count how many new triangles, uh, new, sorry, new good triplets are created if we will do this. Well, let's start from the beginning. Connect the first pair. Nothing yet has con is connected yet. We have four, as I said, right? New uh, triplets, which is this, 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 and this. Now we will next connect it. How many? This one we have already counted, as I said, so there are only three of them, which is this, this, and this. Same thing with this, same thing with this, same thing with this, and the last one, when both already are connected, this segment and this segment already exist. We add this one and we have only two. How many? Uh, 12, 18. In this case, again, the first one gives you four, then the next one, three, 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 and two. Now we cannot connect this one to any of these because it's already. If we connect this one, let's say, to, to these two. Now, this triangle already had this, so it's not new. So, basically, everything is already counted. So, how many? 9 and 6, 15. Now, in this case, again, let's start. 4, 3, 3, 2. Now, this is not connected at all to any of these. So whenever these connect it, it's 4 again. So what's total? 6 and 6, 12, 16. Again, in all cases, we will have less than 20, which means that if we do not create triangles ourselves and we do not have three segments from each point, from at least one point, we cannot make all triangles good. We can we can make maximum 18 triangles good, and two remains basically uncovered. In this particular case, it's this one and this one. They do not have connected points between themselves, and in this case as well. So. Exactly 2, by the way. 18 plus these 2 will be 20. Now, in this case, we also can count all the 5 triangles, which we have not covered, basically. In, a, in any case, <coughs> for example, in this case, what we have not covered. This one. this one, then this one. Anyway, we have not covered all of them. We can basically count how many uh, we still can do, uh, but we will have to add the third segment from some points, which, will, which would lead us to triangle. So, Without breaking the rule of not creating triangles and not creating three segments from the same point, we cannot really cover all the good all, all the triangles. We cannot make them all good. So basically, this is a solution. So you're um, logically divided the whole situation into cases, and uh, decide uh, every case separately. In this case, 
just a little bit of combinatoric you have that to count how many uh, triplets you can make out of six points. But that's just details which you have to... By the way, the, the topic of combinatorics is very important and very interesting, actually. Um, it does give you a, a very good um, push towards uh, developing your analytical and logical thinking. And there is a chapter in the course Mass for Teens and the Unisor.com um, which has a very detailed explanation of what kind of different um, combinatorical um, aspects uh, exist and uh, some problems, very important problems uh, with dice, with, uh, with card deck, etc. So I do recommend you to read this um, chapter. It contains lots of different lectures about different aspects of combinatorics. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.